Hey there, today we are going to have a look at installing external certificate authorities signed certificate on Cisco ICE. So essentially the goal of this lab is to see how we get rid of the certificate issues while accessing or communicating with Cisco ICE using an external certificate authority server for certificate signing, which will be Windows 2012 in our case. The end result will be that you won't be getting HTTPS errors or essentially certificate errors while accessing Cisco ICE via the GUI. And alongside that, we can use the same certificate for authentication purposes for any mechanism that uses DLS. So why certificate or HTTPS errors occur? Well, that is a huge topic and needs a video of its own. But the most common one is that your device, like Windows and Android, have literally trust issues. How this works is that all of the devices have a trusted root certificate store in which a bunch of trusted certificate authorities of the world exist. Any certificate presented to the device that has their stamp of approval will essentially pass the untrusted root certificate error which is the most common for HTTPS or certificate errors. But there are many more reasons you might get an HTTPS or certificate error. For example, root CA invalid, which we just discussed, common name invalid caused by mismatch in domain names and common names, weak signature error caused by weak algorithms, for example, if you use SHA-1 instead of SHA-2, expired certificate errors, that is kind of self-explaining. So our main focus in this lab will be on the root certificate issue alongside the common name problem that may occur. Now, just to familiarize you with the basic topology, we have an ICE 2.7 server and a Windows 2012 R2 server acting as a certificate authority in the server VLAN residing in the subnet of 192.168.35.0 with a slash 24-bit subnet mask. ICE has an IP of 192.168.35.254 and the Certificate Authority server has an IP of 192.168.35.200 respectively. Now on the other side, we have a VLAN 25, which is the user VLAN for both wired and wireless clients with a subnet of 192.168.25.0.24 with the Windows machine having the IP address of 192.168.25.99. Both these networks talk to each other via a router in the middle. So we kind of have a router on a stick approach here. Now basically three key players are present in the lab, namely Windows 10 machine acting as the client, the Windows i server itself, and the Windows Server 2012 acting as the Certificate Authority Server. Neither the ICE nor the Windows machine know about this Certificate Authority Server yet, so they don't trust it. Although in production networks, your domain computers may already trust your organization's Certificate Authority Server. For the action items of this lab, we are going to download and install the Certificate Authority's Certificate into the trusted certificate authority store of the Windows 10 machine so that from here on out, it trusts any certificate that has this certificate authority's approval or sign on it. Next up, just like the Windows machine, IS2 has a trusted certificate authority store called Trusted Certificates. And before we move on to signing ISIS certificate from it, it needs to be present there as a trusted certificate authority entity. So we will be installing the same certificate on ICE as well. Lastly, Cisco ICE will generate a CSR or a certificate signing request and get it signed from this certificate authority. And finally, we will move on to the installation of that certificate signed by the certificate authority that both the Windows and ICE trust. Now, if you haven't already, grab a cup of coffee because we are moving towards the lab and see stuff in action. Welcome to the lab part. As I told you in the animation part that we have three main components of the game and that's the Certificate Authority Server and Windows 10 Machine and ICE Server. So 
let me just show you um, the Windows 10 machine first. Oh, sorry, uh, the Windows 2012 server first. I have a remote desktop connection to it, so we're gonna be doing things if we need to. Okay, uh, the other part is of uh, ICE, so we're gonna take a connection to ICE. That's on 192.168.32. Not 200. It's 254, as I told you in the and. Uh, Actually, you can actually see this. Yeah, there it is. So you can see the topology right now. So we have ice on 254. So going back to ice, as you can see, we can have we have a cert error. This error is particularly saying that certificate authority is invalid. So means that this Windows, this Windows machine, uh, because I am on the Windows machine right now. So that Windows 10 machine that you see is basically this machine which I am on right now. So this is basically saying that the certificate authority is invalid. So um, so that means that um, I'm not gonna trust that certificate which it is uh, you know, like giving me. And this is the certificate. And it, if you see the certification path, this is saying that Basically, this is a self-signed certificate by ICE. So we can also see here that this CA certificate is not trusted because it is not in the trusted root certificate authority store. So what we're gonna be doing in this lab, first of all, is going back to step one. The step one says that what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna install the certificate authorities certificate on Windows 10 machine. So without wasting any time, oh, okay, I'll just um, go to advanced if I want to go uh, deeper, okay, proceed, and I'll just say, okay, yeah, pretty. This is the ice, and just to give you a look and feel of the ice, this is the look and feel of the ice. Now my, my Windows 2012 R2 server has certificate services running on it. You can run it at sta as a standalone server as well if you want to. But it's not actually compulsory to run it as a domain server uh, or or any other server. It can act as um, you know like uh, a standalone CA if you need only certificate services from it. My server is running uh, like domain services and all that. So just to give you a look and feel, I think I have it open in the yeah. There it is. That's my certificate authority. Its name is Doctor Networks and uh, the. This is basically kind of like the console panel, but I'm not gonna actually uh, do this because I have web services running on this server. So what I can do with that is 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 uh, I can just go. I just minimize that. Okay, I can just go to that server, and because I have web services running on it, so I can access my certificate authority via web. So. That's my username and password of my uh, Windows 2012 server. So signing in. Okay, first of all, what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna download the certificate from the um, certificate authority itself. So what you need to do is only go to download CA certificate. Um, as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff running on my certificate authority, but um, uh, just forget it. So uh, for your case, maybe if you are doing this as in a lab setup, there may be just one, the current one. Um, you have to select Base64 from here and download CA certificate. So I've got it downloaded. Just open it up and what I'll see is a certification path. So so uh, that means this is the certificate. And it, it, if I if I see the common name and stuff, so there it is. So the con is Dr. Networks and DrNet.com. So um, what I oh sorry, what did I do? Let me download it again. So what I need to do, I I just need to install it. That's my first step. So I just do the install certificate. And there are two options: current user or local machine. Current user, if you have multiple users, if you have a a domain machine uh, in which multiple users do log in and maybe it's a knock team or something that they have shifts and they log in with their credentials. So certificate, installing a certificate that way is different. So normally um, I would go for the local machine. So that way it's in the machine. So everyone has, every user has that certificate. So I wouldn't opt for going into the automatic option. Uh, I would go for place all certificates in the following store. So I would browse 
and go to trusted root certificate authorities. Remember that uh, warning that we got that ISIS certificate is stamped by a certificate authority, which is not in my trusted root certificate authorities. So I'll just go and say, okay, I'm placing the certificate in this certificate authority store, uh, trusted root certificate authority store. So just finish that and import was successful. Now, if I want to see if that certificate was installed correctly or not, then there is a way. Let me just go to this guy and say, uh, search manager, you could use search manager. Search MGR, I think. That's how you type it. So I go to local computers. I just go here. I click on this certificate, not any place else. I'll just, uh, <clears throat> okay, certificate is local. So I'll go to action and say find certificate. So I'll say doctor that will pop up. And you, as you can see, I, I see my certificate and that is store found in the trusted root certificate authority. So we're done with step one. Uh, let me just go back to my slides. Okay, so here it is. We've done step one. Now it's time for step two. We install the certificate authority certificate into ICE. Now it's kind of like the same way that we just did with the windows um, for, um, where is it? Okay, yeah. So I'm going to the GUI of ICE now. So what I did um, is actually rename that certificate and uh, put it on the desktop so that it's easily accessible. Uh, I go into administrations, certificates, and there's a certificate authority store basically that is called trusted certificates. Now before I get my certificate assigned by this guy, this certificate authority, I need to trust it first, okay? Um, so there are a bunch of them, but um, you know, like uh, I have my own infrastructure here. So I will need to import that certificate. So I'll just do the import. I'll choose the file. I'll just go to desktop over here and root CA certificate that I just renamed that. Okay. Uh, don't get confused. So I'll just say doctor networks. Okay. CA. Okay. Um, if you want to use the certificate authority for client authentications as well. So you could click this option. Okay. And let's go submit. All right. So we've got it. There it is. So that certificate authority is in our trusted store now. So that's done by step two. Um, now comes step three, that is I need to generate a CSR certificate signing request from ICE and then I need to uh, request a certificate from the certificate authority. Now both Windows 10 and ICE trust this certificate authority. So what I need to do now is actually generate the CSR. Why do I need to generate it? Because this certificate that I am presenting the Windows machine uh, is basically signed by me. So if I generate a certificate request and get it signed by this guy here, so Windows 10 now trusts this guy, right? This certificate authority of mine. So it'll be like, okay, you belong to, you have a stamp of approval from a certificate authority that I trust. So I'm not going to get a uh, HTTPS error because I also trust that certificate authority. You get it? So what's up or what's next? Okay. Um, so, so here it is. You go to certificate signing requests, you generate a request. And what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to use this certificate for multiple purposes. So the nodes is, I have only one node. So I'm going to say, okay, for this node, I'm going to uh, go for that. Okay. Before I go into this, one thing you need to make sure, let me just go to deployment and open a new tab. Uh, maybe I have the ICE uh, CLI, but I don't want to make things complicated right now. So, okay, it's popped up. Now, if, if you go to ICE, this is the one node, you see it's full of fully qualified domain name, right? So this domain name should be resolvable from my windows. So if I do, uh, I'll just go there. If I do a command prompt, if I, if I do a command prompt and say ping 
Um, it's basically the DNS name is ISCDN, or maybe it's DNIS. One minute. Oh, DNIS. DNIS. Doctor Networks. Dot com. And do a ping. It's pingable. And that is because actually I have a DNS entry. My DNS is basically my router. So I already have this uh, entry over here on my router. So as you can see, um, that's why I'm able to resolve it. So if you have a DNS server, you should be able to resolve it. Okay, so um, coming back to the certificate sign request, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, the common name and there's a long story about this because common name is going away uh truth be told so but it's still there so the common name should be exactly uh dn.ice.doctornetworks.com but its significance is very much deprecated right now so well, i mean um i'll show you when i get to this subject alternative name so it's it's a great concept okay organization unit is um i'll say it organization is doctornetworks.com i just uh, okay uh, just doctor networks okay city is lhr where i am lahore and punjab punjab it's punjab i know i'm just trying to be like a angres okay so uh pk okay okay now pk uh, okay, um, this is the most, not most important, but actually uh, it's, it's pretty pretty great. Um, what this is, is basically uh, SAN, it stands for SAN, Subject Alternative Name. That means that uh, I want to give you an example, okay? First of all, I'll just copy and paste it here. And I'll just add another entry saying... At one nine two one six eight two thirty five two five four. Now this is kind of mandatory right now that you that the common name should be as a SAN name as well, SAN DNS name, because I've seen problems if you don't have the uh, the SAN DNS name as such. This is because what SAN does basically is say okay, one website or one uh, you know, page that I'm accessing one device can be accessed by uh, multiple domain names or IP addresses. Not multiple IP addresses, obviously, IP addresses will be the same, but the domain names can be changed. So, to actually show you that, I would say, okay, I'm gonna access iServer with an IP address as, as well. Because the problem is that if I don't do this, um, I'm gonna show you. Uh, actually, what my Windows and my browser do is actually check the common name of the certificate that is presented uh, to me and issuer and subject alternative. If anything is um, different from this, means I can access ICE via this domain. Let me just tell you, uh, let me just show you. Okay, I can access ICE from this domain, right? So here is the admin page. Now I can also access ICE with an IP address. Now all you guys that are in IT, you normally don't actually use names, right? So if you're like me, I just love using IP addresses. So I'm like too much into IP addresses. So I'm gonna be accessing the ICE server with an IP or maybe with a domain. So what do I do in that in that case? Because when I try to IP uh, when I try to access my IP address, it's gonna give me an error saying the common name is a mismatch, and you can't do that. The certificate will not be this error, which is which it is showing right now. It's gonna be a common name error, and the error is, would be specifically error underscore cert underscore common name invalid. So. To mitigate that, SAN just kicked in and just resolved this issue altogether. Now what you can do is you can have multiple names of the same server. So what I'm going to do to test this out is I'm going to say, okay, even if it, I if I type in uh, dn dash ice dot doctor I want it to be valid. 
means my Windows, my browser will not say that it's not a secure. The common name error is not there. Okay, so that's about it. So I'm generating the certificate. Now the problem is that uh, my guess it's basically trying to resolve the ICE machine is trying to resolve dnice.networks.net. Now let me just see. I think I have Wireshark open somewhere, or maybe not. Let me just see if uh, it is actually doing that in the back end. Give me a second. Uh, let's see. I have a sniff adopter. I actually have two adopters on my um, Windows server. One is for sniffing packets. Now, okay, there it is. I think this is it. Um, let's see what Curie they're doing. Come on, Curies. No, it's just a different Curie, I think. Uh, let me just generate that again and see if I can find that Curie. Um, similar to no. I'll just do it again, generate. And let's see if it does. Oh, there it is. Oops. Let me just pause this. And uh, so what ICE does when you're doing that is basically on the back end, it checks for that domain name that you're trying to put into the SAN certificate. And where did it go? You saw it, right? Oh, there it is. So um, the response is coming up that the no such domain exists. And that is from 35.254. That is a gateway. So that is this router actually. The router doesn't have any, any entry of .NET, okay? So that's why that's the uh, problem. So it, it's saying if you, if you still like to proceed, even though we can't resolve the name. So, all right, I'll say, okay, I'll just proceed. Okay, mm, it's gonna come up and we're gonna export that certificate and put it into the, there it is. I'm just gonna show, it, show in folder. Oh, there it is. So right click on it, open it with notepad or notepad plus plus, whatever you have, and just copy this certificate um, syntax. And let's go to the Microsoft certificate services. And this time, I'll just go back. This time I'm gonna request a certificate. And I'm requesting a certificate and I'm gonna say, okay, it's gonna be an advanced. Uh, so the base 64 encoded certificate, I mean, this was in base 64, so I'm gonna copy and paste that. I, I actually just copied that and I'm just pasted that. So next thing, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna say it's gonna be for our web server template. Okay, uh, submit it. And we're gonna download that in base 64 encoded. Now everything you do is base 64 encoded. So downloading the certificate, and I'll just open show in folder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and go to, okay, I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to say this is certificate 13, okay, what was that? This is signed cert, all right? So now I'm going to go to ICE, which I have open in this, uh, okay. Okay, this is done. Now, I'm gonna click on certificate signing request again, where I generated this request, and I'm gonna click that uh, specific certificate request that I generated. I'm gonna click bind certificate. So choose that certificate which you have on your desktop, that is the sign cert, which you just got, sir. Okay, um, I'm gonna say it's DN signed cert. So I'm gonna use this for admin. As you can see, it's for the portal, admin portal. If I need to, I'll just click ePOTH authentication. But we're not gonna be showing uh, ePOTH authentication in this lab. But uh, you know, still, I, I'll just click almost all of them because uh, PixGrid uses a different kind of certificate because it requires client and server authentication both of them so we're not going to click that because it's going to generate an error it's saying it's going to say that template uh, does not have user authentication okay um all my certificates will be using this this uh, uh sign certificate so i'm going to hit submit now what's going to happen hopefully if uh, 
enabling admin role for three we call them okay what it's saying it's gonna restart the application services so whenever you're doing this in production maybe your certificate has is expiring what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in this certificate um make sure that you have a downtime to you know like take care of all this so i'll just click yes and it's gonna take some time so it's it's now basically saying that uh, the things you are basically portal tags already assigned to this certificate this was the default certificate the certificate that the ice is showing me as of right now um this was the default certificate we're going to take it away from it and it's going to take some time now so i'm going to pause this video um because it's going to take like 20 to 25 minutes uh, because my ram and everything is very um less as compared to a production environment so stay tuned all right the ice is back so the way I checked it actually is via the CLI of ICE. I basically SSH'd into ICE and hit the command uh, show application status ICE. And it shows me that application server is ru indeed running. Now let, let's just verify. For the time being, I'm still having the same certificate and um, uh, it's, 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 it's showing me, okay, the certificate is okay. So what the problem is, I don't know, let me check. Maybe it's with the browser. Let me check. Let me just open the browser again and open uh, another session to ICE. Oh, there it is. Now, as you can see, I'm opening it from the IP address of 35.254 and still showing me a connection is secure because everything is valid right now. Now, the thing is, the certification path, if you see someone sign the certificate and that someone is certificate authority that we trust so we trust the certificate authority that signed its certificate and it, if you look at the san uh, you can see that there are different um domain names. okay uh the first domain name is there uh dot com this is the one that is actually the domain name of the ice uh, also with the IP, you can open with the IP address now because we have an option. You know, it it also can work with this one. Let me just show you this, and we just and we'll just sign off now. Uh, let me just show you really quick. This one, I'll just uh, go to this guy and say, uh, show me the host. Um, there are a lot of host names, so what I'm gonna be doing is, so I'll just put in IP host, and I'll say. Uh, dnice.net and say 192.168.35.254 so it's basically pointing towards ice as well so if you want to check that out I'll just go and say there is a command prompt I'll say okay uh, the dot net does it point towards it right so it's resolvable and it's pingable so let me just check that so First of all, let's check the, okay, I already have that, <laughs> dot com. So that is dot com okay? Definitely okay. So connection is secure. Uh, let's try dot net. And as you can see, dot net also works. But if uh, for some instance, I, I, I go a little bit goofy kind of a thing that I say, okay, I'm gonna be, you know, like, uh, using dot what is it c a canada as this as well so what's going to happen is when i try to open that try to open that it's resolvable because i've made it but look at that cert common name invalid if it was present in the sand this error wouldn't appear okay so that's about it. You can use the same certificate for e authentication as well. And we will do that in another video. This has been a long video for you guys. So thank you so much. And I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.